हेलो फ्रेंड्स दिस इज एट्थ पार्ट इन योर फर्स्ट ईयर केमिस्ट्री सिलेबस ऑर्गेनिक केमिस्ट्री सम बेसिक प्रिंसिपल्स एंड टेक्निक्स अंटिल नाउ वी हैव स्टडीड सम प्यूरिफिकेशन टेक्निक्स फॉलोड बाय सम डिटेक्शन मेथड्स इन अवर लास्ट सेशन वी हैव डिस्कस्ड हाउ टू डिटेक्ट कार्बन एंड हाइड्रोजन एंड देन हाउ टू डिटेक्ट नाइट्रोजन let me revise a part of the last session in our last session we discussed how to detect nitrogen so i said nitrogen sulfur and halogens all the three are detected by one method and that was devised by lesagne so we say that method is lesagne's method or by making use of sodium fusion extract let me tell you once again in brief how sodium fusion extract is prepared a very small piece of sodium metal is taken in ignition tube and heated then a pinch of organic compound is added and heated slowly then till it becomes red hot and immediately plunged into a china dish containing 5 to 10 ml of distilled water kept for boiling the contents are boiled and filtered the filtrate is called sodium fusion extract or lesagnes extract using this sodium fusion extract or lesagnes extract we can detect nitrogen sulfur and halogens now how nitrogen is detected i have explained in the last session some lesagnes extract about 2 ml is taken to which freshly prepared ferrous sulfate is added followed by boiling cooling and then acidified with sulfuric acid and few drops of ferric chloride to it upon adding few drops of ferric chloride if it gives prussian blue color or peacock blue green color then it indicates the presence of nitrogen in the organic compound now let us see the second detection under second detection of nitrogen sulfur and halogens we shall see the second detection is of sulfur sulfur is another element that can be detected by lesagnes test in order to detect sulfur we have got two methods one is by lead acetate test one is by lead acetate test now before we begin lead acetate test you need to remember that in the lesagnes extract your sulfur will be in the form of sodium sulfide it will be in the form of sodium sulfide it is similar to like nitrogen was present in the lesagnes extract in the form of sodium cyanide likewise here sulfur is present in the form of sodium sulfide now in lead acetate test you take again 2 ml of lesagnes extract to this you add some acetic acid and then you add lead acetate upon adding lead acetate you will get black precipitate now how actually this happens so you took lesagnes extract which is nothing but sodium sulfide now to this you added acetic acid now remember acetic acid is only for acidification it is added only to make the medium acidic now to sodium sulfide or to lesagnes extract the actual required reagent is lead acetate lead acetate is given by the formula ch3 coo twice pb when lead acetate is added to sodium sulfide what happens see you will get a precipitate of lead sulfide you will get lead sulfide black precipitate and then the other compound is sodium acetate so how do you carry out this test in the lab in a given test tube you take some lesagnes extract which is colorless solution to this you add acetic acid colorless solution to this you add lead acetate lead acetate is almost colorless sometimes slightly milkish in color now when you add lead acetate as soon as you add lead acetate to the test tube then if the color changes to black 
and black powder begins to settle at the bottom then it indicates the presence of lead sulfide which indicates the presence of sulfur in the organic compound. So, in this way you can detect sulfur by lead acetate test. Again you have one more test under Lasagne's method this test is called sodium nitro prusside test it is sodium nitro prusside test. Now, let us see what sodium nitro prusside test is you take 2 ml of lasagne's extract to this you add sodium nitro prusside and it will give you violet color solution or violet colored precipitate. How actually this reaction works you see. So, you take sodium sulphide and react it with sodium nitro prusside. Sodium nitro prusside is this. This entire reagent is called sodium nitro prusside. When you add sodium nitro prusside to lasagne's extract, it should give you this complex Na4 Fe Cn5 NOS. The entire sodium sulphide goes and mixes with sodium nitro prusside to give you a violet colored complex. This indicates the presence of sulphur in any organic compound. So, if you have nitrogen, Prussian blue color, if you have got sulphur in lead acetate test, you will get black color and in sodium nitro prusside test for sulphur, you will get violet color. In this way, you can detect sulphur also. Now, if your organic compound has got only nitrogen, what color should you get? Prussian blue. If your organic compound has got only sulphur and lead acetate test is done, then black precipitate and if sodium nitro prusside test is done, then violet color. Now, what if your organic compound has got both nitrogen and sulphur in it? What will be the color obtained? See, you can identify the presence of sulphur without actually testing for sulphur. Let us see how this works. Now, you know that when you were detecting nitrogen, I told you nitrogen will be present in the organic compound in this form. It will be present in the form of sodium cyanide. This is true only when nitrogen alone is present. If sulphur alone is present, it is in the form of sodium sulphide. Now, what if nitrogen along with nitrogen along with sulphur is present then if nitrogen along with sulphur is present then you will have sodium thiocyanate you will have nitrogen and sulphur in the form of sodium thiocyanate. Now while detecting nitrogen revise what all the reagents you added go back to the previous session and remember or recall what reagents you require for detection of nitrogen first you need freshly prepared ferrous sulphate boil cool then add few drops of sulfuric acid lastly you will add ferric chloride when you add ferric chloride what color should you get you should get prussian blue color if you get prussian blue color only then nitrogen is present now the same test is done if both nitrogen and sulfur are present and you do not know sulfur is present you are checking for nitrogen so the last reagent you added was ferric chloride when you add ferric chloride this time if sulfur is present it will not give you prussian blue color it will give you it will give you other color so when you add ferric chloride to lasagne's extract which is assumed to be containing nitrogen as well as sulfur then you will get ferric thiocyanate you will get ferric thiocyanate which is blood red color which is blood red colored solution plus 3 NaCl. So, without actually testing for sulfur in the detection of nitrogen itself you can identify whether sulfur is present or not. 
if only nitrogen was present color obtained was blue if only sulfur was present the color would have been either black or violet if during detection of nitrogen you get blood red color instead of prussian blue color you make a note that your organic compound is containing both nitrogen and sulfur it contains both nitrogen and sulfur so this was about detection of nitrogen first one detection of sulfur the second now let us see detection of halogens it is third under second heading detection of halogens okay detection of halogens what all halogens are there chlorine bromine and iodine now similar on the lines of nitrogen and sulfur if your organic compound is containing halogen it will be in the form of sodium halide if it is chlorine if x is chlorine then it could be nacl or nabr or nai now let us see how this actually works how you detect halogens using lasagne's extract so for detection of halogens you have a test called silver nitrate test this is silver nitrate test is used as a confirmatory test for detecting halogens in the organic compound how see 2 ml of lasagne's extract is taken and boiled with dilute nitric acid and boiled with dilute nitric acid upon boiling and then cooling you boil first then cool and add silver nitrate solution and then add silver nitrate solution upon adding silver nitrate solution three different observations can be seen why three different because we have three different halogens now let us assume your organic compound is containing only chlorine your organic compound is containing only chlorine so in what form chlorine is present in the lasagne's extract it is in the form of sodium chloride when it is boiled with dilute nitric acid cooled and then silver nitrate is added and when silver nitrate is added what happens these two will get precipitated agcl gets precipitated and sodium nitrate is formed our main intention is to find out the colors based on which we are identifying the halogens so silver chloride will be obtained as a white curdy precipitate if chlorine is present then in the test tube you will be able to see white curdy precipitate and this precipitate is completely soluble in ammonium hydroxide it is completely soluble in ammonium hydroxide means how will you do this test you take one test tube to that you take 2 ml of lasagne's extract add few drops of dilute nitric acid keep it for boiling and after cooling you add few drops of silver nitrate when you add few drops of silver nitrate then you will get white curdy precipitate if chlorine is present this is half of the reaction half of the test done as soon as you get white curdy precipitate confirm it whether it is chlorine or not how you keep adding ammonium hydroxide to the test tube continuously now when you add ammonium hydroxide the white curdy precipitate begins to disappear the white curd like solution again begins to turn like water it becomes a transparent solution so we say silver chloride has got completely dissolved in ammonium hydroxide this gives us an indication that the organic compound is containing chlorine what if your organic compound has got bromine then it will be in the form of nabr isn't it when this is reacted with silver nitrate what will you get you will get agbr again as a precipitate with sodium nitrate common if chlorine was present you will get white curdy precipitate and if bromine is present you will get pale yellow precipitate you will get pale yellow precipitate that is partially 
soluble in ammonium hydroxide. When I say pale yellow, this does not mean you compare it with yellow shades. If you have seen ice cream straw, ice cream candy straw or bamboo color that is compared with the precipitate of bromine. Bromine's precipitate or silver bromide's precipitate color looks same like ice cream straw color or bamboo color, dried bamboo color. Okay. So, if you get pale yellow precipitate in the test tube and upon adding of ammonium hydroxide only a part of precipitate gets dissolved, only a part of precipitate gets soluble, then we say that precipitate belongs to silver bromide which corresponds to presence of bromine in the organic compound. What if it is iodine? Then it is in the form of silver iodide and if this is reacted with the silver nitrate, you will get silver iodide as a precipitate along with sodium nitrate. Now this silver iodide is yellowish precipitate which is completely completely insoluble in ammonium hydroxide. See the striking differences in precipitate of chlorine it got completely dissolved in ammonium hydroxide. Precipitate of bromine it did it dissolved partially whereas precipitate of iodine that is silver iodide precipitate no matter how much quantity of ammonium hydroxide you add it does not get dissolved it remains as it is the solution remains yellow. So this indicates the presence of iodine in the organic compound. Now looking at all these reactions you might say sir while writing while, while explaining the test you said lasagna's extract is boiled with nitric acid cooled and then and then what is added silver nitrate is added. Go back to the previous test in detection of sulphur by lead acetate test I told you that lasagna's extract is mixed first with acetic acid and then lead acetate is added. What was the role of acetic acid there? It was for making the conditions acidic to make the medium acidic acetic acid was added. Here in this case nitric acid is added not for making the conditions acidic there is a special function of nitric acid in the detection of halogens. This could be an important question or in the, in the form of one mark question in your theory exam or in competitive exams also you can expect what is the actual role of nitric acid in the detection of halogens. So nitric acid removes nitrogen and sulphur. You may ask why will it remove? Say if your organic compound has got halogens alongside nitrogen and sulphur means your compound has got nitrogen, sulphur and halogens all the three are present. You know if nitrogen and sulphur only these two are present you saw blood red color in detection of nitrogen itself. Now while you are testing for halogens and if nitrogen and sulphur both are present then they will interfere in the detection of halogens. Let us see how. I told you if nitrogen is present it will be in the form of sodium cyanide and if sulphur is present it will be in the form of sodium sulphide. Remember this cyanide is also called as a pseudo halogen. It is also called pseudo halogen means though it is not a halogen, it is not a halogen it behaves like one. It's similarities with chlorine makes it a pseudo halogen. This means whatever reactions chlorine shows most of the reactions even cyanide also shows. Though cyanide does not belong to the halogen family it behaves like chlorine therefore we call it as pseudo halogen. Now imagine if your organic compound is not containing chlorine at all and you are checking for chlorine and somehow you will get white color precipitate. What will you say your compound is containing chlorine but actually chlorine is not there in the organic compound then where did you get your white color precipitate it was due to the presence of this cyanide. This cyanide if it is present here and reacted with AgNO3 here you will get AgCN white color precipitate. 
so to make sure that nitrogen does not interfere in the detection of halogens you need to remove them you need to remove nitrogen and sulfur both how do you remove by boiling it with nitric acid upon boiling with nitric acid this nitric acid removes the cyanide in the form of hydrogen cyanide gas along with sodium nitrate so simple the role of nitric acid in the detection of halogen is that it decomposes sodium cyanide to hydrogen cyanide gas similarly sodium sulfide when heated with or boiled with nitric acid it eliminates sulfur in the form of hydrogen sulfide gas it eliminates it eliminates sulfur in the form of hydrogen sulfide gas if these two are not removed then they will interfere in the detection of which elements halogens so you need to remember the function of nitric acid during the detection of halogens what is the function the main function is nitric acid decomposes sodium cyanide to hydrogen cyanide and sodium sulfide to hydrogen sulfide if these two are not removed they will interfere with the detection of halogens so this was about detection of halogens now second detection is over so in second detection we studied about how to detect nitrogen how to detect sulfur and then lastly halogens now we shall see how to detect the next element it is phosphorus detection of phosphorus for a detection of <coughs> nitrogen sulfur and halogens you needed lessagnes extract for phosphorus you did not you do not need so now forget lessagnes extract or sodium fusion extract this is a separate method in this method in order to detect <coughs> phosphorus first the organic compound containing phosphorus is reacted with sodium peroxide it is reacted with sodium peroxide i shall first write the reactions and then i shall explain how this actually works so your organic compound containing phosphorus is reacted with phosphorus is reacted with sodium peroxide which is a very good oxidizing agent when the organic compound containing phosphorus is reacted with any oxidizing agent like sodium peroxide then phosphorus gets converted into sodium phosphate it gets converted into sodium phosphate okay sodium phosphate so in the first step what did you do you converted you converted the <coughs> phosphorus into sodium phosphate in the next step the solution of sodium phosphate the solution of sodium phosphate is boiled with concentrated nitric acid or simply say nitric acid when you boil uh, sodium phosphate with nitric acid what happens phosphorus which was in the form of sodium phosphate will get converted into phosphoric acid it will get converted into phosphoric acid then you will have sodium nitrate common <clears throat> okay so two changes you have done first your organic compound is containing phosphorus you do not know to check whether it is present or not you will first react it with sodium peroxide when you react it with sodium peroxide phosphorus gets converted into sodium phosphate to this solution you will add nitric acid and boil after boiling what will happen sodium phosphate gets converted into phosphoric acid means phosphorus first got converted into sodium phosphate now into phosphoric acid now this phosphoric acid is reacted with another reagent this phosphoric acid is reacted with a reagent called ammonium 
molybdate it is reacted with ammonium molybdate and in the presence of nitric acid in the presence of nitric acid this phosphoric acid treat is treated with a reagent called ammonium molybdate what happens when ammonium molybdate reacts with phosphoric acid see then you will get a solution called ammonium ammonium phospho molybdate ammonium phospho molybdate along with other products that is ammonium nitrate and water 12 water 21 ammonium nitrate so this 21 and uh, this should be 3 if i am not wrong not 3 okay no not 3 required okay so what is done <coughs> in the first step you will convert phosphorus into sodium phosphate then sodium phosphate is converted into sodium phosphate is converted into phosphoric acid then phosphoric acid is reacted with is reacted with ammonium molybdate upon reacting with ammonium molybdate you will get ammonium phospho molybdate this ammonium phospho molybdate looks yellow so if you get yellow colored solution after all this circus this indicates the presence of phosphorus in the given compound now a note to remember since <coughs> this reaction or detection of phosphorus involves some complex reactions like look at the last reaction it is difficult to remember for that reason in the exams you will not be asked to write the reactions in the detection of phosphorus so if you remember the theory part that is enough a given organic compound containing phosphorus is reacted with sodium peroxide as an oxidizing agent then followed by heating with nitric acid to convert phosphorus into phosphoric acid followed by the addition of ammonium molybdate giving you yellow colored precipitate or solution if you write this much it indicates the presence of phosphorus it will be enough now other than this there can be one more questions like what is the yellow colored solution obtained in the detection of phosphorus your answer should be it is ammonium phosphomolybdate what is chemically ammonium phosphomolybdate then you need to remember this entire formula nh4 thrice po4 12 moo3 it is ammonium phosphomolybdate or else what is the color of ammonium phosphomolybdate obtained in detection of phosphorus your answer should be yellow okay this much is for detection of phosphorus the last detection is detection of oxygen so we have come to the last detection of element which is oxygen carbon and hydrogen are over nitrogen is over sulfur is over halogen is over phosphorus is over now we have oxygen so there are no direct methods available to detect oxygen you may ask why there are some methods but not at this level so you need to remember that there is no direct method available to detect oxygen in any organic compound however oxygen is detected in the form of functional groups it is detected in the form of functional groups like if it is an alcohol or if it is an aldehyde or if it is a ketone or if it is a carboxylic acid etc so any functional group which contains oxygen in it can be identified by different tests by different methods so indirectly when you check the presence of those functional groups in an organic compound you are also confirming the presence of oxygen so if somebody asks you what are the methods available for detecting oxygen so there is no specific direct available method to detect oxygen however oxygen can be detected in the form of functional groups like alcohol aldehyde carboxylic acids ketones etc so these were the detection of elements 
so till now we have done purification techniques and detection techniques in our next session we shall see how these elements which are now detected are estimated means now we know that they are present in an organic compound to what extent and to what quantity they are present in an organic compound that is called estimation we shall see estimation of elements in our next session till then keep watching the videos and follow the classes thank you